In section 2.3, we'll look at the product and the quotient rules, and we'll also look at higher order derivatives. But our main focus is the product and quotient rules. So the product rule comes about because you cannot just take the derivative of each function in a product and then multiply them together. So in other words, if you had a function that was f times g and you wanted to take that derivative, this is not equal to the derivative of f times the derivative of g. They do not work that way. So this is what not to do. This is a no right here. So what is the product rule? Well, it says this. For p of x is equal to f of x times g of x, p prime of x, the derivative, is equal to f prime of x times g of x plus the derivative of g of x times f of x. So it's sort of a mixture of derivatives of f and uh, g and then the regular functions of f and g sort of mixed together. So in shorthand notation, this would say the derivative of f times g is equal to f prime g plus g prime f. Now some people write it backwards and they write g prime f plus f prime g. Those are the same thing. Uh, because you're adding, they can go in either order. Example number one. Let p of x equal 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 9. Find p prime of x. Well, the first thing you might notice is that you could multiply these uh, terms out to get one big long string and then take the derivative, and that would work. But we're using the product rule uh, in this section, and so I start off with an easy example to demonstrate it, not because it's probably the easier way to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to denote this function here, this little piece, this factor, to be the f, and we'll do this second factor to be the g. So p prime of x is going to be equal to f prime of x times g of x unchanged plus g prime of x times f of x. And so we'll take these derivatives, or leave them the same, and multiply them together as needed. So the first part is f prime. Well, the derivative of 3x minus 1 is just 3 times g unchanged, so that's just 2x plus 9, plus the derivative of g, the derivative of 2x plus 9 is just 2, times f unchanged, which is 3x minus 1. And that is the derivative, but now what we need to do is multiply and simplify everything out. So we're going to get 6x plus 27 plus 6x minus 2, and that's equal to 12x plus 25. And that's the simplified derivative of the original product. Example number two, let p of x be equal to x squared minus 8x plus 9 times x cubed minus 2x squared plus 7x plus 1. Find p prime of x. So again, we're going to let f denote this first factor, and then g denote the second factor. And so p prime of x is equal to the derivative of f. So that's 2x minus 8 times g unchanged plus 
plus the derivative of g, which is 3x squared minus 4x plus 7, times f unchanged, x squared minus 8x plus 9. And now we multiply and simplify. So I'm going to distribute the 2x into the cubic factor. So that's going to be 2x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 14x squared plus 2x. Now we distribute the negative 8. We get negative 8x cubed plus 16x squared minus 56x minus 8. And now we move over to the second part, so everything is plus. And now we start with the 3x squared term, and we distribute that to the other quadratic. So we'll get 3x to the fourth minus 24x cubed plus 27x squared. Now we move to the negative 4x and distribute. We get negative 4x cubed plus 32x squared minus 36x. And finally, we distribute the 7 and we get 7x squared minus 56x plus 63. And now you combine like terms, and you get 5x to the fourth minus 40x cubed plus 96x squared minus 100 46x plus 55. Write your polynomials in descending order by exponent, and that's your answer. Example number three. For the curve y is equal to 5x minus 2 times x squared minus 4, find where the curve has horizontal tangent lines. Well, we've learned already that horizontal tangent lines occur when the derivative is equal to 0. So we'll take the derivative. So dy dx, the symbol for the derivative, is equal to, and this is a product, so we have to use the product rule. So the derivative of the first is 5 times the second unchanged plus the derivative of the second, 2x, times the first unchanged, 5x minus 2. Let's simplify this by distributing and simplifying. So we get 5x squared minus 20 plus 10x squared minus 4x. Simplifying, we get 15x squared minus 4x minus 20. We have a quadratic. We're going to set the quadratic equal to 0 to find where it has horizontal tangent lines. And you might try to factor, but I don't think it factors, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula. And that would be x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times 15 times negative 20 divided by 2 times 15. This would be 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 1200 divided by 30.
So that's equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 1216 divided by 30. You need to simplify the radical. So that would be uh, 1216 is divisible by 64. So you can take out an 8 or take out a 64, it comes out as an 8, and then it leaves 19 over 30. I see that I have even numbers on top outside of the radical and an even number on the bottom. So that means I can factor out at least a 2, maybe more. I'm only going to factor out the 2 because I know that 30 only has one factor of 2 in it. And when I cancel that 2 here with the 30, it leaves a 15. 15 doesn't share any factors with 2 and 4, so this must be the right answer, or the final answer. There's a rule for finding the derivatives of a quotient as well. So if you had f divided by g and you wanted that derivative, it is not equal to f prime over g prime. No, we have a different rule for doing that as well. So let's write out the quotient rule. So for q of x equal to f of x divided by g of x, and the thing to note here is that it does matter which function is on top and which function is on the bottom. So make sure that you note that. The derivative, q of x, is equal to f prime of x times g of x minus g prime of x times f of x divided by g of x unchanged and then squared on the denominator. So notice how this looks very much like the product rule, except the sign in the middle is now minus instead of addition, and then you're dividing by g squared. Example number four. Let q of x equal 2x plus 5 divided by 7x minus 1. Find q prime of x. So let's go ahead and denote the numerator with f and the denominator with g, and q prime of x is now equal to the derivative of f, which is 2, times the bottom, unchanged, the g, unchanged, minus the derivative of g, 7, times the top, unchanged, 2x plus 5, all divided by g, 7x minus 1, squared. And now we simplify. So this is going to be 14x minus 2 minus 14x minus 35 over... 7x minus 1 squared. A uh, little word before we continue on the denominator. We usually, almost always, leave the square part in the denominator. We don't actually multiply it out. Uh, we need it in this form when we do need it, and if we don't need it, then we just don't bother with it. So hardly ever have I ever multiplied this out for whatever reason. So you can leave that as, as just 7x minus 1 squared. And then we simplify the top, and this is negative 37 over 7x minus 1 squared. Example number 5. Let q of x equal x cubed divided by x squared plus 9x plus 10. Find q prime of x. So the top is f, the bottom is g. 
So Q prime of X is going to be 3X squared, the derivative of the top, times the bottom, unchanged, minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 2X plus 9, times the top, unchanged, X cubed, divided by the bottom squared. Now we distribute and simplify. So we're going to get 3x to the fourth plus 27x cubed plus 30x squared minus 2x to the fourth minus 9x cubed divided by x squared plus 9x plus 10 squared And now combining terms in the numerator, we get x to the fourth plus 18x cubed plus 30x squared over x squared plus 9x plus 10 squared. Let's look at example number six. The daily profit when selling X calculators is given by P of X is equal to negative X squared plus 180X minus 3000. Find the average profit function. So average profit AP of X is defined to be P of X over X. And that would be negative X squared plus 180x minus 3,000 over x. Part B, find the rate the average profit is changing when selling 50 calculators. So rate at a single point tells us that we need a derivative. And so we're going to find the derivative of AP. And the AP function is a quotient, and so we're going to use the quotient rule. But the reminder here is that anytime you're finding a rate, you need a derivative. The product rule and the quotient rule, and then another rule that we're going to learn in the next section, those are just methods of finding the derivative that are required for certain types of functions. But the derivative is still the rate of change, instantaneous rate of change, all of that good stuff. Slope of the tangent line, all of that. It's just how do you go about finding the derivative depends on what the function looks like. So AP prime of X. Well, I have a quotient. I'm going to use the quotient rule. The derivative of the top is negative 2X plus 180 times the bottom unchanged X minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, times the numerator unchanged, negative x squared plus 180x minus 3,000, all divided by x squared. Now we simplify. So we get negative 2x squared plus 180x plus x squared minus 180x plus 3,000 divided by x squared. Simplifying some more, we get negative x squared plus 3,000 divided by x squared. Now we want to know what how the average pro, uh, profit is changing 
when we're selling 50 calculators. That's AP prime of 50. So we plug in 50. We get negative 50 squared plus 3,000 divided by 50 squared. And you work this out and you get 0 0.20. Now, what were the units? Well, it was a rate, so I have to have a numerator unit and a denominator unit. The function was profit, so that's money. And the x's were calculators. So it's 20 cents per calculator. Now that's not how the profit is changing at 50. That's how the average profit is changing. It's a little bit different. So as it turns out, the derivative is really just the first derivative of a function. You can, in fact, take the derivative of a derivative, and that would then be called the second derivative. And then you can take its derivative and get the third derivative, and then fourth derivatives, and, and so on. So let's start with y is equal to a function f of x. The first derivative is f prime of x, or dy dx. And if you're talking about a function that is giving you distance, then the first derivative gives you velocity. It's still rate of change, but rate of change in distance over time is velocity. So that's sort of a special word for first derivative. All right, second derivative is f double prime of x or d squared y dx squared. So notice how this notation changes in the Leibniz fractional notation here on the right. The, the d is squared on the top. That d represents taking a derivative. So that means you're taking two derivatives of the y function. The x is squared on the bottom. That means you're taking the derivative with respect to x twice. Now, at this stage in calculus, there's only one variable that we could possibly be taking the derivative with respect to, so it's obviously going to be x squared. But by the end of the semester, there will be multiple variables, and so the order down there will matter, which one is squared, all that sort of stuff. Uh, a second note on this is the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. So what is the derivative of a velocity function? In other words, what is the rate of change in velocity with respect to time? Well, that is called acceleration. So you might see a problem where it asks for the acceleration. Well, that's the second derivative of the distance function or the first derivative of the velocity function. So next we have the third derivative and that would be f triple prime of x, or d cubed y dx cubed. There is an associated word with this from higher order physics. It's called jerk. And I believe that this name comes from the feeling that you get, for example, when you're on a roller coaster. And you're bending around and going up or down or whatever. So you're changing your acceleration over a certain time period, and it feels sort of jerky, right? You're being sort of thrown left and right, up and down and stuff. And I think that's where that name comes from. Uh, we don't really use that word in this class, but I just thought you'd like to know it. All right. Let's get to the fourth one here. So the fourth derivative. Now, notice how the third derivative had three prime marks. This is sort of where the where they, they give up, and they just say the fourth derivative of f. So instead of drawing out four prime marks, they use an exponent, but to denote that it's actually a derivative and not just f to the fourth power, they put the exponent in parentheses, and that's what indicates it's a derivative. So this is the fourth derivative of f, and then d4, 
uh, d to the fourth power y dx4. And then the nth derivative, you can take as many derivatives as you would like, would just be f raised to the nth derivative power there of x, and it's d to the nth y dx to the nth. Example number seven. Let f of x equal x to the sixth plus 2x to the fifth plus 9x plus 18. Find the second, third, and fourth derivatives of f. Well, you can't find any of those until you find the first derivative. So you've got to start with the first derivative. And that would be 6x to the fifth plus 10x to the fourth plus 9. And now the second derivative, f double prime of x is equal to 30x to the fourth plus 40x cubed. And now the third derivative would be 120x cubed plus 120x squared. And the fourth derivative. And that would be 360x squared plus 240x. Example number eight. The position of an object moving along a straight line, left and right, is given by s of t is equal to t cubed minus 4t squared plus 2t at time t seconds. Find the object's velocity and acceleration functions. Which direction is the object headed after one second, and is the object accelerating or decelerating at that one second? All right, so here is the scenario. We have this straight line. And we're going to have a, an object, like a, like a little particle or a ball or whatever, right? And let's just go ahead and say that this is zero right here. And this is the plus direction, and this is the minus direction, just like a number line. The actual position of this particle on this line is given by this formula right here. So... At t seconds, whatever t cubed minus 4t squared plus 2t is, that's the number on this number line where that particle is at that moment. And then the particle is moving, so it has velocity going left and right. And then if the particle is speeding up or slowing down, the particle has acceleration. And so that's why we can find velocity and acceleration functions. The thing that we have to note here is that going to the right is positive and going to the left is negative. And that's going to help us in the orientation of our uh, little particle here. So first let's find velocity and acceleration. So V of T is actually S prime of T. And that's going to be 3T squared minus 8t plus 2. And a of t is going to be the derivative of velocity, which is also the second derivative of the s function, the distance function. And so that's going to be 6t minus 8. So which direction is the object headed after one second? So to find that, let's write that down. Direction after one second. So to find that, we're going to evaluate the velocity at one second. And if it's positive, that means it's headed to the right. If it's negative, that means it's headed to the left. So 
v of 1 is equal to 3 times 1 squared minus 8 times 1 plus 2, which would be 3 minus 8 plus 2, which is negative 3. So that means the object is headed to the left. And then the question is, while the object is doing that, is it accelerating or decelerating? So we're going to look at the acceleration at one second. And that would be 6 times 1 minus 8, which is equal to negative 2. So since that one is negative, that means it is decelerating. If it had been positive, it would have been accelerating. All right, thanks for watching.